Hi guys, in this video we're going to get started on writing the code for the REST API we designed in the last video. If you haven't seen that video where we design our resource models and HTTP request methods, you should check it out. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. We're going to be using Flask REST Plus to write this app, which is an extension for the popular Python micro web framework Flask. Flask REST Plus adds support for quickly building REST APIs. I have a repo set up here with all the documentation and breadboard schematics, as well as the code we'll be writing. It also contains a file called requirements.txt, which is a simple way of keeping track of our Python dependencies. So we'll start by logging into Raspberry Pi and cloning this repo. So let's clone this repo. Now generally you want to use a Python virtual environment to handle dependencies, but since this is a fresh install and I don't really want to get too distracted from the main content, I'm just going to install our Python packages globally. So there are plenty of tutorials out there about using virtual environments in Python and you should definitely look one up if virtual environments are new to you. So let's use pip3 to install our dependencies here. So let's start writing our app. So we'll start with our import statements. We're going to need to import Flask. And we're going to use a few modules here from Flask REST Plus. We're going to use the API, the resource, and the fields. This will be used when we're uh, describing our pin model. And we're also going to need to import our Pi for our GPI pin control. So we'll start by instantiating our Flask object here, our app. And we're going to pass this app into our Flask REST Plus API object, along with some documentation. So the version number, uh, LED switch description, and this will be the location of our docs directory. So Flask REST Plus is integrated tightly with Swagger UI, a really cool tool for documenting your APIs. And we're going to see more about Swagger very soon. And since we're only going to be dealing with our pins endpoint at this point, we're going to use a namespace. So all of our routes will be appended to this pins endpoint. So Flask REST Plus allows us to define a model for our resources. This is kind of like a blueprint name. It's very useful for marshalling in our data in and out of HTTP responses. So we're going to start by defining our ID. We're going to want this to be read only since it's going to be assigned once and will not change. And then our pin number, our color, and our state. We're going to store these as strings and our pin number as an integer. Uh, these descriptions will show up in our Swagger UI documentation. So we're not going to be worrying about any persistence here. So we're not going to use a database. And we'll just store all our pins in a list for now. And I, I want the focus to be more on the API design and usage rather than how to, you, you know, use a SQL database or an object relational mapper toolkit like SQL Alchemy. So I'm going to create a helper class here, pinutil, that will handle all the business logic. It'll keep a list of our active pins, handle incrementing the unique IDs, and change the state of the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins by using RPI when certain HTTP requests are made to our application. So it's basically going to handle all the business logic, and we'll create our own uh, our pin resources to handle just the uh, the Flask specific stuff. And then after we'll define our pin resources using the, the Flask routing and stuff like that. So we'll start with just a little init here. Uh, we'll, we'll start our counter off at zero and we'll initiate our pins, which is basically our poor man's database here to be an empty list. So now let's define our CRUD methods here. We're gonna have a git. So when we make a git request, we're gonna search our list of pins for the ID and return that pin. Uh, if we can't find the pin, we're just going to throw a 404. And this is the only part of our pin util class that has any dependency on Flask. So there's a little bit of coupling, but I figure it's, it's simpler to keep it like this. Next, our create. So it's going to take in some data here and create a pin based on that data. So what we need to do is increment our counter here so we have a unique ID and then just add that pin to the pin list. And then we'll set up our pin initially to off. So we can also create this pin in an on state. So we want to allow for that as well. Once we're done creating, we'll return the pin. We'll have our update, similar to this, but we'll update our data based on what's passed in. Main thing is we want to check if we need to change the state of our GBIO pins, and then we'll return the pin. 
Delete simply will just yank that pin from our list and make sure we turn that output pin associated with the removed pin to off. So now we're going to define our Flask routes here. So we're going to start by naming our route and since we have our namespace as pins, we're going to just use the root and this will actually be the pins endpoint here. So we're going to want to be able to make our two HTTP requests on our pins endpoint. We're going to want to get and we're going to want to post. And we want to marshal our data with our pin model that we defined up at the top here. So that means that when we're passed in our JSON data, it will convert it to uh, our Python pin model. So all we want to do when we hit a, a get to our pins endpoint is return a list of all pins. So we'll call our helper function to just return all its pins. And if we make a post, we're going to call the create method that we defined up earlier using the JSON data that has been sent in with our post request. Okay, now we want to define our pin slash ID endpoint. This will be used to access individual pins. So we're going to set the route here and keep in mind we have the namespace attached to this. So this will actually be pins slash ID. Uh, we'll return a 404 by default if the pin is not found. And this is just a bit of documentation here for uh, our Swagger UI. So we want to define our four HTTP methods here, get, delete, put, and patch. And we're going to want to marshal our requests with our pin model as well here. So when we make a get request, we'll just call our pin util object and it'll return that pin. Delete, similar, we're just going to be using our pin util object to handle all this, which we just described above. On our put request, we want to expect the pin model and we want to validate true and this will make sure we have each field defined in our put requests. This is kind of a, a typical REST characteristic that put responses handle full object updates. And a patch will look almost the same, except we won't have validate to true. So this way we'll be allowed to update just single fields or two or whatever if we want to. Okay, and then finally we're going to do our setup. So we want to set our GPI mode to use the pin number in here. And then we'll create our pin util object and just initialize our little pin list here with our initial state. And this is all exactly as it is in the schematic and the breadboard image in the repo. So I'll put a link to the Git repository in the description. And then finally we'll want to start our app by running app.run. And that's it. That'll do it for the implementation of our REST API. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll get this Flask app up and running on a Raspberry Pi and take a look at how Flask Quest Plus is integrated with Swagger UI. We'll then use Swagger UI to make some requests to our pins endpoint to light up some LEDs. So make sure to subscribe so you'll see when the next video comes out. And we'll see you in the next one. Later, guys.